Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where last time we managed to send a probe to EVE we made some mistakes but we managed to get a load of money all in all nobody died still not got anywhere near sort of infinite amounts of money we still need to watch our budget because our rockets are getting more and more expensive we're in a pretty damn good position though and first off today let's just Start off by completing the research tree. Last research is aerospace tech. This gives us the rapier engine. And that is that. The entire vanilla research tree is done. And yeah, since I am trying to stick with a vanilla campaign, I won't be installing mods to increase the tree, which means we don't really need any science at this point. So what we can do is start converting our science to finances instead. Well, we could do, we're going to need to bank a little bit more science ahead of time. I like to put this somewhere about 95% just to keep a tiny bit of science trickling in just for the sake of it. So we're going to need about two and a half thousand science in order to put that investment in. But that's fine, we can certainly start saving up for that. And that'll end up with us getting a load of research in. So some of our missions have been easily turning in a thousand science per mission. That would end up equaling about two and a half million funds. Okay, so now to decide what we're going to do today. So our only active mission is mapping the satellites. Uh, we don't need to do anything for this. We've already set up our satellite. We just need to let this run. So the next story mission is to... I'll do a couple of things. We're supposed to splash down in the oceans of Eve and walk on the surface of Eve. Which does give a load of money. The problem is if we want to walk on the surface, we need to send a Kerbal. And as we saw last time, getting anything back from Eve, including a tiny little probe, is an incredibly large prospect. So probably not going to be doing that one just yet. Okay, so after looking at some of our options here, I think what we're going to do is go on a bit of a rescue mission. Because so we did leave three Kerbals on the surface of Minmus, and it turned out that they weren't actually in control of their ships, so they're not even doing science there. So we're going to go pick those guys up, and to fund it, we can get science data from the surface of Minmus. And we can do an advanced scan with a rover. Okay, um, we can also get some money here just detecting three comets with a sentinel. We've got a couple of sentinels now. Yep. So I just flipped over just to check this has counted. So all I need to do is wait for this to detect three comets. So three comets or two or 20 asteroids. And I start getting money in. You know what? If we're doing a mission to Minmus... I think it's about time we design a space plane. We're not going by half measures here. I'm going to try and design a rather chunky space plane to be used for things like launching things into orbit, deploying small uh, satellites and things into orbit, and doing things like this rescue mission. Um, that would be really cool for this. Um, this now has a cargo ramp section. So if I have a cargo ramp section and I have a cargo bay, I can just put the bloody um, rovers inside this thing. That's really quite cute.
I, I think this thing is designed. Um, it's a bit insane. Started off thinking today was going to be a nice, simple episode, and I've ended up trying to create this behemoth. I don't know if it'll actually fly, that'll be the first test. I am not putting a Kerbal in this, uh, but it's got enough space for all the Kerbals to come back. Do you have the little lander in the back here? Uh, it should be able to go out, probe the thing, get the transmission done, and get back. So it's all able to be automated. It's kind of a crazy little thing. Okay, so this is the T-Rex, or the Transonic Easily Assembled Reusable Experiment. It looks flat, it looks heavy. Basic idea is it's got four rapier engines to give it its thrust. That should hopefully get it to take off speed before it hits the end of the runway. It's got the nuclear engines to give it a little more thrust in space. It's got RCS to help it land on other planets. And we'll just have to see how this does. Um, don't think there's anything else to do, so let's just see what happens. Okay, one big problem, I forgot to strut it together. So we'll recover and do that. It also automatically put crew in it, which I really don't want. I'll tell you what this does need, it needs communication. Okay, I'm going to put a little backup default communication here. Uh, the regular one here, which will, I'll assign to deploy with the solar panels. Yeah, solar panels. Toggle the antenna. I thought this little... I'm very confused here. Okay, this isn't actually a control unit at the front here. This just gives a load of stuff. Okay, right. I understand. So it has SAS control, that's for non-pilots to be able to use, that's no problem there, I can easily fix that. There we go, that should give it enough control. Okay, a little bit bouncy on its gears. That is all fine. Alright, apply brakes. Throttle to full, I'm going to put SAS on just to help me a little bit. Right, then I am going to go stage to activate the rapier engines. They definitely have a lot of thrust at overpowering the brakes. They seem to have control over your at least. A bit concerned that the end of the runway is rapidly approaching. I don't know if this thing. I don't know what speed this thing takes off at. I'm just going to use as much of the runway as I can. Try and pitch up. It's not pitching up. It's pitching down. Okay. Well, important things learned. We did not have enough thrust. Or maybe we did have enough thrust, we didn't have enough lift. Okay, so after a fair bit of fiddling, I have changed it significantly. The center fuselage is exactly the same. What I've done instead is I've gone for a biplane. And then on the back we've got more thrust, we've now got a total of six uh, rapier engines and still the two nuclear engines. Hopefully this should have a whole load more lift and these sections do also count as lifting bodies. And it does have more thrust, about 50% more thrust, so it can hopefully get off the ground a little bit quicker. Definitely more expensive, but let's hope it's worth it. Oop, I forgot to strut it, so I will just go back and do that. I'm also just going to test our little lander here. Not entirely sure how one releases, 
So I think I'm going to need to add in some kind of release mechanism there to actually let this drop out the back. Okay, so I've made a little change to this. I think that little load I was locking onto uh, is something I'd need to decouple from. So instead I've just locked the rover to the back of the compartment. It's got a little decoupler there that I can fire off. And so this should work. I've also limited the opening of the hatch so it doesn't go quite so far down and uh, push the back of this off the ground. All right, now it's looking a lot more stable. Flight surfaces seem to be working. And just before we take this thing all the way to uh, Minmus, I'm just going to test the release. Okay, well, other than the controls working backwards, this definitely functions. So I'm going to have to rotate the decoupler around because it's sticking on this stage. I don't want it to. Okay, it's having trouble driving, but it is. You can certainly sort that out. It is decoupling. I can always just get the engineer to burn that off. And the engine is functioning. It is producing thrust. Hardly any thrust, but that's fine. It's just meant for a little extra boost. Okay, so no one is inside. I just need to check the staging. Staging looks good now. Okay, so brakes on. Ignite the rapiers. SAS on. Full forward and release the brakes. Uh, the other thing I did with this design is the center of lift is further forward so it better matches the center of mass. It's got this open so I can... Ooh, dear. Okay, the center of mass may be too far forward. Yeah, the center of lift is actually a little further forward than I thought it was compared to the center of mass. Okay, they're a little bit better overlined and overlapping now, so hopefully that'll be a bit better. Okay, so time for another attempt there. to rotate, doesn't want to rotate, now it wants to rotate, oh there we go, Let's see if I can stabilise the speed a bit, yeah, it's going to come up, Other than that in their stool there, everything seems to be handling okay. This is definitely the biggest aircraft that I've ever built in Kerbal. I've done single stage orbits before, but always based on the much smaller dimensions. Never anything with this Mark IV cockpit. At this point I'm just going to try and build a little bit of speed. Here currently 
airflow is increasing, thrust is increasing, speed and altitude are increasing, all looking good. I did forgot to forget to reattach the heating radiators, so we'll just have to see how re-entry goes. I'm getting some serious trouble here. This thing uh, is rather a fan of oscillating. I may have to dive a bit to pick up speed again. Problem is we lose if we lose speed we lose air throw and therefore thrust. Uh, this thing just has such a tendency to try and pitch up. Uh, we may be in an unrecoverable role here. We've stalled out. Yeah, if control services are not responding, I don't have enough pitch authority on this. Nope. I almost recovered it there, but not quite. Yeah, I tried to see if it was SAS that was throwing me off. No, SAS is definitely helping me here, not hindering me. Uh, one of these times, I'm not going to pull out of one of these dives. Part of the problem might be that I've assigned all of the control surfaces on the wingtips to be out of runs, so they do have pitch authority. And I think I've just got too much pitch authority here. Or not. As soon as it starts pitching up, it just won't stop pitching up is the problem. Yeah, now I seem to have next to no pitch authority, so I definitely overdid that. No. This is just too unstable, it really wants to flip around and it's nearly impossible to avoid that. It's going to be impossible for me to keep going at transonic speeds without it flipping around repeatedly. I'm just going to try and ditch this in the water as safely as I can once I've re-established control. See here, it loves to get into spins. Say once I've re-established control, assuming I can re-establish control, this may be an unrecoverable spin here. Uh, it is really not happy. I basically have no way to control this. It is fully stalled out. There's something very aerodynamically wrong with this, even at low speeds. I'm ending up in these oscillations. Uh, yep, it's stalling out. Now right, we're going in. Stalled out just before landing. Right. So it has problems, it has rather big problems. Uh, recovered 163, so that has been a very expensive trip. So yeah, let me know uh, what ideas you have of how I can fix this bloody thing. Uh, obviously there's something very, very wrong with it. It desperately wants to pitch up, as soon as it starts pitching up it just ends up in a uncontrollable roll. 
and also when achieving any speeds more than about 100 it ends up in this really weird oscillating where it desperately wants to pitch up or down and it's very very difficult to control any slight change of the angle of attack will just send it rolling one way or the other so very aerodynamically unstable so yeah let me know what you think let me know how i can fix this or if this is a case of complete redesign Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that uh, somewhat silly, somewhat unproductive episode, and I hope I catch you next time. Until then, remember to be kind to yourself and everyone else. Cheers.